And people of God, what is our mission? We are Galilean Lutheran Church, growing in, living out, and celebrating the grace and love of Christ Jesus our Lord. I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our sins and hear the words of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Our gathering song is on the screens, How Great Thou Art. You may be seated.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of your cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll now have the reading of the lessons. The first reading comes from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore. I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will content with me? Let us stand up together who are my adversaries. Let them confront me. It is God the Lord. Lord, who helps me, who will declare me guilty, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read with me what's written in the bold type. I love the Lord who has heard my voice, and I listen to my supplication. For the Lord has given me you. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought low, and God saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt well with you. For you have rescued my life from death my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading comes from the book of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is speaking and perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole body. Or look at ships, through, they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder. Wherever the will of the pilot directs, so also the tongue is small. Member number, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a word of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beasts and bird, of reptiles and sea creatures can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who, make, who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth we come, blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring for, pour forth? from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water. Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine fig? <clears throat> no more can salty water yield fresh. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to 
Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able. Alleluia! Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus then called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Who do you say that I am? Well, depending on when you knew me in life, the answer changes. Nancy and Gary's daughter, Mike's sister, Anna's mom, a soldier, a student, a band geek, a teacher, a pastor. But throughout my entire life, since my baptism, I am a child of God. Who do you say that I am? Now Jesus is asking his disciples that same question. Who do you say that I am? Who do people say that I am? Earlier, some people from his hometown especially referred to him as Joseph and Mary's son, a carpenter. And as Jesus wandered Galilee and the surrounding area, people began to see him as a teacher and a healer. And those in authority see Jesus as a troublemaker. So when the disciples are asked, who do people say that I am? Their answer is that some people see him as John the Baptist, as Herod did or Elijah, or one of the prophets of old. And then Jesus asks it a little more personally. Who do you say that I am? And Peter, the spokesman for the disciples, says, you are the Messiah, the anointed one, the long-awaited Messiah promised by the prophets of old. And Peter's answer is correct. Jesus is the Messiah. As Jesus begins to teach about what this means, that he is the promised one, Peter begins to push back. No. Peter says, no, you are the Messiah. There is no way you can suffer. There is no way we will betray you. There is no way you will die, and we won't allow it. 
And Jesus replies to the Peter who got it right, you are the Messiah, suddenly says, get behind me, Satan. Jesus calls Peter Satan and says, your mind is on human things, not on divine things. Jesus is calling his followers to a new way of thinking, a new definition of the word Messiah, of what the long-awaited Messiah will accomplish for God's people for all of creation. And we, along with the disciples, are to take a step back and begin to change our point of view. Look at this a little differently, Jesus says, from divine things, not human things. You see, the children of Abraham and Sarah longed for the glory days when Israel was a strong nation, the days of King David, when all the enemies were destroyed and life was good. A view from an earthly human viewpoint. The people's vision was for a Messiah that would conquer their enemies. But Jesus says, no, there's a bigger mission. Look at the larger picture. Look at it from God's point of view. A Messiah is the one who will restore a relationship with God through his betrayal, through his death and resurrection. This Messiah will offer new life, eternal life, and forgiveness. A new relationship with all creation is in the making. And it's a concept that the disciples, the followers, would not fully realize until all those unthinkable events that Jesus predicted took place. It's a new way of thinking. Jesus goes on to teach his disciples just what it means to be a follower, to be a disciple. He says, take up your cross, lose one's life. Confusing and difficult words to hear, a concept that is counter to the way the world sees life. One commentator puts Jesus in kind of a contemporary way of thinking. And it's like this. He writes, listen all of you, we've reached crossroads, and I will add, we're midway through Mark's gospel. Things are changing. We've reached a crossroad. Anyone who thinks this journey as this journey as a violent campaign, a movement of domination and triumph, turn back now. That's not what I'm about, says Jesus. That's not what true deliverance is about. And so that's not what following me is about. Jesus says, we're not headed to conquer the temple of Caesarea Philippi. We are headed to Jerusalem, to Golgotha, to the cross. In a deep sense, to follow me is to take up a cross of your own, to let go of all self-centered grasping all will to power and domination, and to suffer for the sake of the gospel of love and justice. He goes on to say, let me tell you a great mystery. Deep down in creation, there is a physics more profound than the surface of things, that superficial layer in which all appears to be driven by might and violence and grasping. Underneath all of that is a deeper physics, according to which what's truly important is actually driven by love and humility and generosity. To live according to this deeper physics means you will suffer, and it also means you will rise. The logic of self-centered grasping, of trying to save your own life, 
in the end only results in losing it. And the logic of neighborly generosity, of losing your life for the sake of love and justice, in the end results in saving it. It's contrary to what the world thinks. Jesus' view is very different. St. Augustine um, and theologians after him talked of sin being this, curved inward on oneself. Curved in one. Think of it as a fist. And what following Jesus allows us to do is open up our hand and welcome, serve. It's a loving hand that opens, right? We love open hands. There was a lot of hugging this last week, right? With Karen's death. A lot of love. We didn't come up and we came up with loving arms. That's what Jesus is calling us to do, to open up and offer love to the world. But we need to take care. It does not mean demeaning ourselves or damaging ourselves or seek suffering for its own sake. That's, as one uh, professor said, that's 100 degrees off the mark. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying for the, to live for the sake of the gospel and recognize that God loves each of us and we are to open up ourselves and love as God loves. Yes, it's not easy. Following Jesus is not easy. To follow Jesus is to help our neighbor our neighbor who is different from us, doesn't look like us. To follow Jesus is to reach out to those that humanity, that society pushes to the margins and the edges of society. And it's not about conquering with power or demeaning our neighbor. It's reaching out in love and being little Christ to a world that is in hurt. We stand at a crossroads in our life each day. Do we follow the way of the world and use power and might to conquer? Or do we follow Jesus and be the children of God that we were created to be, to reach out to those in need and show that there is a loving God in our midst. In prayer, in meditation, may you hear Jesus whispering to you, come, follow me, come, amen. Our hymn of the day is, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.
Would you please rise if you are able and join me in the recitation of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. <clears throat> Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the church throughout the world. Form us into communities of forgiveness and grace. Also help us to notice where you are calling us into new relationships and give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy. mercy is great. We pray for the earth and all its inhabitants, protect lands at risk of wildfire and heal dying forests. Where fire brings destruction, raise up new growth, Guide us in tending precarious ecosystems. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shaping policies that prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing insecurity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, and all who grieve, especially the family and friends of Karen, Jennifer, Nia, Larry, Kim, pastors Carolyn and Troy, Dan, Brooklyn, Larry and Lorraine, Tom, Dwayne, and those who we name aloud or in our hearts. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your enduring love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. 
We pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equity and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages in their learning. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember our beloved dead, especially our sister Karen, who with the great cloud of witnesses bear witness to your saving grace. Accompany us in your pilgrimage of faith that we too place our hope and trust in you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. And share that side of peace with one another. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament, new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to the table. Come, here is your God. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with, the dignity, at, with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now go back into the world with this blessing. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you and keep you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing song is Lift High the Cross.
Thanks be to God.